pre-recording our show. We are in the studio, and we're going to be doing two shows here back-to-back. So our first one is going to be Dennis Napoli. He is with Gecko Floor Care. We're going to tell you how to take care of those floors. And our second one is going to be Mark de Villiers. Did I get it right? Yeah. With Moves Plus. We're going to talk all about moving. So stick around. Here we are for our pre-record. All right. Ready when you are, Lee. Okay. And three, two, one. Welcome to Tampa Home Talk. Thank you so much for joining us today. We appreciate you chiming in. And if it's your first time ever catching the show, the mission of our show here at Tampa Home Talk is to help you keep and maintain great credit, live within your means, and build wealth. My team and I are passionate about those topics. We love to cover anything in around the real estate space as well. Well, and we do a lot to try and make your everyday life better. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our guest for today's show. And we're going to talk all about floor care and how to take care of those floors, how to make sure that you're maintaining them correctly, and more importantly, how to get those things ready when we're getting ready to put your house on the market, right? So we will definitely be connecting with you again in the future. So we have Dennis Napoli. He's with Gecko Floor Care. Welcome to the show. Hi, Katrina. Thank you for having me. And he tells me that his, uh, his friends call him Denny, so I may be flipping back and forth. Denny's fine. <laughs> you love how I just jump in there and assume I'm your friend after there you go. That's five fine. minutes on the That's air. That's fine. Um, so how'd you get your start with, with floor care? We'll talk about the specifics in your company and the equipment and all that jazz in a few minutes, but how'd you get started in this business? It's actually, my first job in high school was cleaning the floors of my local supermarket. Um, you know, something I enjoyed doing, uh, and then uh, I had a really good friend of mine uh, that I met in the first grade. My my father and his father started a wrestling team together. We wrestled from first grade all the way through high school together, and uh, his 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 father owned a uh, car carpet cleaning company. So I would do a lot of side work with my buddy. Uh, never worked full time for him, but we did a lot of side work together. And so that kind of because you're from out of the area, right? From Cleveland. Okay, and then so you relocated to the Tampa Bay area and is that when you started gecko flooring yes uh we we came down here last year uh in february looking around trying to figure out what we want what we wanted to do my wife was passionate about moving to florida she was tired of the snow <laughs> so we did kind of a we hear that a lot oh, yeah, us, yeah, us yeah, local sure you, <laughs> you know never even saw snow until i was 19 years old but. exactly but uh, we did a little tour to southern florida we went over to the miami side down to naples and orlando and uh um a good friend of mine, he has a, a, a carpet and tile cleaning business over in West Palm. I saw his equipment, started talking to him, you know, where he bought it and, and you know, the price he paid and everything. Got me thinking a little bit. Went over to West Palm to stay with my aunt and uncle and he actually had a, a, a commercial cleaning business where they did parking garages and things of that nature. Uh, similar but just, you know, our equipment on steroids. And uh, he was very successful with that business so I, I, I really respected what he had to say about the business. Uh, talked about it. We kind of pulled out the demographics maps and, and, and pinpointed the, the Tampa area, and that's where we are. Wow. Well, welcome to Tampa Bay. Thank you. <laughs> so what all do you clean? Because it's not just floors, is it? Uh, well, it's it's uh, carpeting and tile. It's, we do hot water extraction, so it's carpet, tile, and uh, we also do upholstery. We, we, I've had a few people have me do the interior of their car. It's not something I necessarily advertise, but uh, generally it's, it's uh, uh, tile, your grout, carpeting, and upholstery. So I'd love to talk about the process a little bit and how, you know, when you go, you said it's hot water extraction? Correct. So what does that mean exactly? Like, what's the process behind that? Yeah, so what we'll do is the, uh, we'll put down a light pre-spray, which basically what the pre-spray is, it's a, a solution that, that changes the pH level. Um, normal pH is 7, your blood is 7. Um, so the pre-spray, will it's kind of a citrusy pre-spray, and it, it raises the alkalinity up to 11, um, which basically loosens the dirt up. It's nothing. Yeah, I was going to say, what does that mean? What's going on on the carpet when yeah, all that happens? It, it's basically just loosening the dirt up a little bit. It's not. It's not anything that's too abrasive. Uh, you know, I've, you could spray it on your leg or whatever. It's not going to not going to kill you. It's just, but it's it's uh, it's just a, it's enough. Kind of like pool water. It's enough to kind of to, to 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 get the things uh, loosened up a little bit. Uh, but then the real work is done with the steam. Uh, our truck generates water that's uh, and it, we we can bring our own water in fresh water in um, but it, it raises the it gives it the water up 220 degrees comes in in a hot water hose sprays the area and then we extract it with a vacuum
Um, for carpeting, we're gonna we're gonna have a light PSI. We're not gonna you know put too much water into your carpet, so you want them to be drying up with the tile. We can go up to we can go up to 2,500 psi and really like pressure wash it basically, and then and extract the water out. Um, but you don't want to go too hard. You want to be careful what the surfaces are. Um, things like travertine, natural stone, you can actually dull the finish if you go at it too hard. So you want to keep lower psi with that. Um, but certainly 1500, 1800 psi is fine for for most ceramic tiles. So what's the process for cleaning that you put the stuff down to loosen the dirt, mm -hmm. and then you actually spray it with hot, really hot water of some sort, and then you vacuum, you soak that up? Well, the, yeah, the, 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 the pre-spray we do, we, we let it sit for about 15 minutes or so to, to, to do what it's got to do. Uh, the, the spraying and the vacuuming are done simultaneously. The, uh, um, for the carpet, it's basically like a long wand that just has a little sprayer at the end of it. And, and so as soon as we're spraying it down, it's, it's you know getting into it, grabbing a hold of the dirt, and then we vacuum it out. Now, can you physically see? some of that dirt coming up oh yeah yeah I mean with one stroke of the one you can see you know like a line where we did it it's pretty impressive sometimes um, with the tile tool and you can get on our, our Facebook page and our website and see see some of the videos I, I still get amazed at, at some of the dirt that comes out of the grout uh, you know you'll, you'll come in there it's black grout and when you with one pass of the tool it's white uh, the nice thing about the tile tool is it's it's uh, it's a dome that keeps everything inside that dome. So it's, it's getting 1,500 PSI of water pressure, but everything's contained inside that dome and it's vacuumed out, so it leaves your floor dry and there's no splashing around. You know, It's not getting on your uh, cabinets or anything like that. It's gonna be all contained within that dome. So Lisa's pulling up actually what you're talking about, and we will mm -hmm. post this video that we're describing over on Tampa Home Talk. So awesome. the person listening can go over there and check it out. But it was interesting, I'm watching this tool clean the tile, mm -hmm. this little round head literally going over the grout and it comes out like a different color. Because yeah. it literally, the tile matched the grout, but it didn't look like that in the before I mean, photo. It, I, I, tile and grout, I've, I've seen it actually change the color. You know, people think they have a dark grout and it ends up being, you know, white. Uh, I went into some restaurants and did their floors and, and the grout was all all black and I uh, one with one pass of tool now they got red grout and they're, they're, they're like, like oh what? my gosh and it's funny because there's actually been cases where they've had grout come loose and come out and they've replaced it with black grout thinking it was black and then when I clean it you know they get a right. surprise <laughs> so what is the process for that like how how does it do that how's it like because this is pretty amazing so when when you go on over to Tampa Home Talk and you see this thing cleaning the grout you'll see what I mean like it's almost like a magic eraser, that's what I want to describe it as. Yeah. So if you've ever, if you have kids and you've ever cleaned crayons or anything crazy that you think would be really hard to get off, and you take this magic eraser and you're like, wow, it just disappeared, that's kind of like what happened with the dirt on this tile. Well, picture your grout, uh, it's almost like a sponge. I mean, it, it, it's, it's a, most of the grout is out there is a sanded grout, so it's going to have pores in it. It's going to have little cracks and openings, and the dirt's going to get in there. If you go over with a mop uh, to clean it, you're going to get some of the surf stuff but you're not going to get what's going down inside those pores what the, what our tool does by hitting it with the steam and the psi it actually forces it out of the pores and then ex and then vacuum extracts it out before it has a chance to settle back in so it's literally getting in there inside the grout and pulling it out and so after you take that out do you have to reseal that grout we do we we have uh, we have a couple different sealers one is a water base that we can do right away um, and another one, we would typically wait a day, let it dry up, and then it's a solvent-based. Uh, it, it, it's pretty amazing. I mean, it, you could literally, I had a customer spill coffee on their brand new grout floor, and this was a job that we did that was just sealing. We didn't clean it, it was a brand new home. But we sealed the grout for her. They were moving in, she had a giant Starbucks coffee, spilled it all over her white grout, and was freaking out, but it, it beat it up like water, you know, like beads of water on a window. She dabbed it with a towel and it was uh, fine. There was no penetration into the grout. So it's, we do have some sealers that you can't really even see it, but it's a penetrant that gets inside the grout and, and just keeps anything from penetrating in. So what about natural stone? Is the process it's different, I'm sure, for cleaning something like uh, travertine or? Yeah, it's that. similar but different. I mean, it's, it's more it's uh, it's more the, 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 the amount of pressure we put in the water because uh, if, we, if we go at travertine too hard, uh, you know, you got a nice shiny travertine floor that's been polished, and if we hit it with 1500 psi, we're going to actually etch the stone and make it dull. So we got to go at it with a lower psi. And that the travertine is like, it's really different. Like it has to be resealed in a certain way, which usually brightens it up. So definitely, yeah, totally different process. So you're listening to Tampa Home Talk.
Talk. I'm your host, Katrina Maid. We have in studio today, Ness Napoli. He's with Gecko Floor Care. Click, ah, Gecko Floor Care. And we're going to tell you how to keep those floors clean, how to get them clean. We're going to share some stories. Um, and when we come back, we're going to talk more about prices, the area you serve, and some of those frequently asked questions that people have with regards to floor care. We'll be back in just a moment. And you thought I'll you'd be the so. one to mess up. <laughs> and you thought you'd be the one to mess up. <laughs> <laughs> I trip over my own words all the time. Just keep going. Yeah, well, okay. This guy's a pro. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I told my uh, my my uh, future daughter-in-law for her wedding, she's all worried she's going to mess up. I go, listen, it doesn't have to be flawless to be perfect. You know, just go out there and have fun. And don't you DJ too? I do some DJ, yeah, I, I do these fundraisers where I do night at the races where I'm calling horse races that are on videos and stuff, so okay. I, yeah, I'm comfortable. Dennis is a funny guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring out some of that humor for the end yeah. of the show. <laughs> <laughs> he was telling me a story on the way here, how he sang the national anthem at the one of the baseball, or the hockey, hockey game yeah. in Cleveland. Totally butchered, I can't sing. And he doesn't sing very well. <laughs> Wait, did they lose that game or win that game? Just yeah. asking. They won the game. <laughs> okay. So the omen is just for baseball, yeah, just yeah. right now. Okay. <laughs> All right, Leo, well, ready when you're ready. Uh, yeah. Three, two, one. Welcome back. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk. Thank you so much for sticking with us through the break. I'm your host, Katrina Mainwell, and in the studio today we have Dennis Napoli. He is with Gecko Floor Care. And if you missed the earlier part of our show, you're definitely going to want to catch it, check it out in its entirety, just search for Tampa Home Talk and you'll pull up any podcast player. I'm sure, I'm sure everybody's at the, at the edge of their seat. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting because I don't think everybody understands the process yeah, yeah. Uh, on how to clean it. And it's interesting. And, and when they see the video over on Tampa Home yeah. Talk, especially about how this grout cleans, they may be very curious. Those videos really are, are a, a key marketing tool for us because when people actually see what's going on, it's, it, it is pretty amazing. I know. Uh, and with the radio, we have to describe it so that yeah. you guys can see it through your ears. Which is, you know, it's not always an easy thing to do yeah. on the radio. Um, so let's talk about the cost. Like, do you have, um, like, is there a minimum area that you do? Is, is there a trip charge? Uh, I mean, I've done, yeah, it, it depends on how far out I'm traveling, basically. If I'm doing somebody that's in my neighborhood, I might come out there and just do a $50 job because it's going to be quick. I'll, I'll be Stand in and out. It. It's no big deal. Uh, typically, I don't want to. You know, do anything that's uh, too small. And, you know, travel out to you know drive an hour for a fifty dollar job. Right, like that. doesn't make sense. Right, but uh, so it kind of depends on the area. And, okay. uh, and I, I, you know, my 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 philosophy is I want to make people happy because I don't know who they know. So so if I go out there and I do a job for fifty dollars, it may lead to a thousand dollar job because they they know somebody somewhere. And right. So I'm about making people happy and taking care of their floors. So what area do you serve? Uh, basically. A, a 25 mile radius from Riverview. So I've gone out to St. Petersburg, okay. uh, Lakeland, you know. I've gone out of ways. And again, that also depends on the job. Uh, if, it, if it's a commercial job where it's gonna be right. you know, a big job, I'll go, I'll go farther. But uh, generally for residential, I try to stay within a 15, 20 mile radius. Well, like with anything, it has to make sense. You right. know, if you're already in the area, it would make a difference and that sort of thing. Correct. Now, do you have a trip charge just for going or do you just charge based on what you're cleaning? No, it's, it's generally square footage. Uh, we do uh, it's for carpeting it's 25 cents a square foot for uh, tile it's 35 cents a square foot and then ceiling would be anywhere from uh, 20 to 30 cents a square foot and so um, what do you what's the process for ceiling do you apply any special like for carpet is it like a scotch guard type thing and yeah, carpet scotch guard uh, for the tile uh, we're, we're generally just sealing the grout we don't do the ceramic tile or anything like that, we just do the grout lines, and we have a, a little device that looks kind of like a wiffle ball bat that's got a roller on the end of it, and that that bat's filled with the with, with the sealer, and, and we just kind of roll the little roller along the uh, the grout lines, and uh, it, it, it applies it at an even flow, and, and then we'll go back and wipe up any excess. And that keeps the dirt from soaking back down into the pores it does. of the grout. How long does that usually last? How long does that stay on? The so manufacturer says anywhere from three to 20 years, gotcha. so <laughs> it depends upon the traffic. And That's a pretty broad It's broad. It, it, if, you have, if, you, if you're going into a, you know, a commercial restaurant scenario where, the, where they're constantly, you know, cleaning it every day because it's got grease and everything, it's going to be less. But if you're I mean, that story home, you shared was pretty crazy that the grout was red yeah. and they thought it was black and they literally filled it with black. Right. Like how the person redoing the grout didn't know that is beyond me. Well, it's because you can't tell until you actually clean it. I mean, it, the, 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 the soil gets into the grout, into the pores, so you, yeah, you can't tell unless you actually, you know, extract that out of there. 
that is a, that's, that's a lot of dirt. It's pretty yeah. nasty. You think about a restaurant too. It's like oh, restaurants you get you get you know by the deep fryers. I mean, we, we there are times we have to go in there with a with a screwdriver and scrape the grout lines first because it's literally like a quarter inch fry of, oil. It's like caulk. You know, it's it's just been there for years and it's and it's yeah, it's pretty bad. But uh, you know, when we leave, it's it's clean. That stuff is like glue too. It's like yeah. Uh, like I've, even if we I've have a little. A I've filled a bucket with this this uh, caulk. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> So how are your prices compared to other people's? Are they are they competitive? Are they? It's online? competitive. Yeah, I mean we're not we're not going to be necessarily the cheapest. We're definitely not the most expensive. Um, I've been told we're kind of right in the middle, uh, but by a lot of people that have uh, used several steam cleaners, you know the people that do that have property managers and things. Um, but uh, yeah, we're, we're we're somewhere in the middle, and I'm not trying to be the most expensive or the cheapest. Uh, you know we're doing it. It's you know the the uh, the climate drives the price, I mean, the, the, the competition. Right. Um, but, uh, so do you have any particular guarantees, say, if you go out to clean um, carpet or grout or whatever? Sure, yeah, I, I mean, I, I have 100% customer satisfaction guarantee. If you're not happy, you know, we'll come back out and give it another shot. Um, if it's something that's, uh, you know, we, we haven't had a scenario yet where we've, where we've made a mistake and screwed somebody's carpet up, but uh, um, if you're not happy, we'll go out there and, and you know, do what it takes to get it right for you. Now, I guess it probably should be, we probably should have segmented this, right, in different parts, like talking about ca carpet mm -hmm. and then um, the tile and the natural stone because they all, the process is very different. But I guess going back to carpet for a moment, um, how does it take longer to clean one versus the other? Um, it depends on, on the conditions. I mean, you know, if you go out there, sometimes you get real high traffic uh, carpet that's, that's pretty bad. That might take a little longer, so we got to do a few passes over it and, and put a few chemicals on it. Um, tile is, and again, the, the, the tile might be a situation where you have that restaurant job where it's, you know, got caulk on it you know, from all the grease. Um, so it depends on the conditions, but generally they're about the same amount of time because it's the tools, it, it's, a, it's typically a one pass type tool that cleans it. So it's, it's generally about the same. Right. So talking about carpet specifically, because I had carpet for many years, and I also have kids and I have pets, and that's like just a bad combination if you have carpet. So with that being said, I can remember like literally getting the carpets clean and the kids would spill something on yeah. it like yeah. the next day. It wouldn't even make it a week. Yeah. Um, how does it go with some of like those older stains? Like do you get those out pretty reasonably? And, and I've heard a lot of times that the stains actually can reappear. They can. If you have, if you have really high traffic, uh, and it's down into the padding and everything else. You can have a situation where uh, you clean it, and then as it's drying, it'll it'll it's like a candle wick where where the, the stain will come back up through the the fiber and reappear. Uh, but if that happens, we'll come back out and, and, and take care of it for you. And that process is actually called wicking. It's called wicking. Where this where Correct. it appears. Yep. So once that point, can that be cleaned, or it's just you got to replace it? No, it can be cleaned. It's just you know you gotta you gotta go at it until you get that. You know, completely out. But uh, it, it, again, it's not a it's not a common thing that happens, but it can happen. Gotcha. And um, so, when you have the carpets clean, are they usually wet after you walk on? They're damp, uh, and it usually takes a couple hours, two hours or so to to, to dry. Couldn't fly, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's crushing cars. And those. There we go. We are back on. You're watching this right now. Welcome back. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk. Thank you for rejoining us after the break. We appreciate it. And we have in studio today Gecko Floor Care, Dennis Napoli. He's our our special guest of the Still hour. Here. <laughs> <laughs> Still here. Oh, does that mean you're bored with no, me no, or no, the no, show? No, no, no. That means I'm hanging in there I'm with Still you. here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't leave you're yet. You didn't see off. Um, so we were talking all about cleaning carpet, and we talked about a lot of things you should know. Mm -hmm. Drying time can be roughly two hours. If the humidity is high, it can take a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, is there anything that people should do differently, or is there anything they should do while the carpet is drying? Don't spill anything on it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let your dog pee on it. Don't let your kids spill stuff. Oh my gosh. Now, like, I, okay, so I have to share this story. Totally off topic, but, like, I, 
when I get my nails done, like it was like the running joke for so long that they paint my nails and I would mess them up within like yeah. a couple minutes, like not even five <laughs> minutes. Before your so now when I go to a shop, I do the gel and the gel dries right away. You put it under the UV light, you can't mess it up. Like it's just, you can't mess it up. So now like the running joke is a nail ladies, they won't even, can't even get regular nail polish because I'm going to mess it up. I've, call, I've <laughs> called customers back. Generally, if I have a house where it's a bad pet odor situation, I'll call them back and check it. Hey, you know, it's just good. It's dried up. And, and I've had the situation where, yeah, it smells great until my dog peed on it again. And oh, my gosh. Said, oh. So, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Give them a little nicely wrapped right. basket of puppy pads. I don't know. Yeah. Like, that's just yeah. bad. They should change your floors probably for yeah. Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> so, what about pet odor? Because we didn't talk about that, like the pet odor and the pet dander for people that have mm -hmm. allergies. Um, what do you do? Is it is it the is it the uh, chemicals that you use? Is it the PSI and the actual equipment yeah, the in the truck? Yeah, the dander is more the, uh, a function of the vacuum pressure we have to, to, to extract it. Um, it'll pull out here. I, I get I get I actually had uh, I have a little inline filter that's in my hose and I actually uh, I, I dumped that out in my front lawn to clean it out the, the one day and I had eight hawks flying over it because I thought it was a dead rabbit in my and I pulled that much hair out <laughs> from one house so yeah we definitely get uh, we get the hair out um, it, it's generally it's more, more a function of the vacuum pressure than anything else so what about the pet odor like if they did have a dog that made an accident or whatever yeah, a regular a, accident on the carpet combination of things it's uh, we have a, a, a solution that goes in there and neutralizes it uh, neutralizes out the odor neutralizes the alkalinity of the of the, uh, of the urine uh, and then another solution that goes in there it basically protects it from uh, the odor coming back uh, but it's also uh, the the water and the extraction we're pulling most of that out of there uh, but there's like a bio uh, solution we use that keeps the odor from coming back that's nice. So is there, um, is there any different scents that you can get or are they just, are they, are they different? I mean, there's different, different I, there's different fragrances I can put on top of that if you really want to, okay. but I like to neutralize it and, and, and just more or less neutralize it. I don't want to have you know, it smell like roses or anything like that. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather have it just smell like a carpet, uh, you know, the way it should smell. Agreed, because then it smells like you're covering something right. up. You exactly. want that fresh I want to know if it's smell. coming back. I, you know, I want to know if your carpets are clean, so. Absolutely, that makes sense. And um, we haven't talked too much on the, or I had one more question on the carpet. So we, and we talked about this a little bit before the show, and I'm sure you have some fun stories that you can share, but we talked about like what happens when you go into a house and they have not only pet odor or dander, but what about fleas? Do you ever deal with that? Um, we've dealt, we had one house that had a, a million cockroach school around, but uh, fleas, um, and I'm not an exterminator. I'm not a guy that goes in there and says I'm pest control. But uh, you know, certainly bed bugs. If we're doing a mattress, uh, you know, we're, we're we're pumping 220 degrees steam onto the mattress, so it's going to kill any bed bugs. So I see you guys working cooperatively with the pest control people because they've got to get it out, but then you've got to also get right. any eggs or anything. Yeah, we, out. we've we've a lot of times we'll follow up after a pest control. Uh, there was a house that, that needed to be it really needed a, a bad extermination job, and there was. You know, the little bugs were all over the place, but they were all dead. So we just we sweep them up, go in there and, and uh, do a steam clean, and it'll pick up. Yeah, like I said, the eggs and things of that nature will. What kind dead. of little bugs? Uh, it was the smaller cockroaches. Sure. There was probably 40 billion of them <laughs> in this house. Do you ever get the heebie-jeebies after you clean oh, the yeah. job like that? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. oh, I'm gonna take Make this a beeline home. for the shower, like you know, I'm, the clothes are off before I get out of the garage. Does your wife make you shower outside? Oh yeah. While you leave oh yeah, yeah. Job? She'll spray, <laughs> she'll spray me down with the hose once in a while. She's like. No. <laughs> Dennis, you're staying outside. We're not, not coming in. Yeah, I mean, for every nice, you know, million dollar house that's beautiful, we have the, the you know, the, the one that's really kind of give you the heebie jeebies. But now, do you ever have like any ripples or bubbles in the carpet after it's cleaned? Generally, they're there before we clean. Uh, we don't really create the ripples, but uh, we'll go in there and the carpet will need to be stretched. And we do, we do that. We do some light stretching. If it's you know, a wave here or there. I have a little kicker that I have that I can stretch it out and, and you know, recut it in and everything. If it's really bad, I have I have guys that I call out to, you know, their carpet layers and installers because mm -hmm. a lot of times you'll have to re-seam at a door because 
because uh, you know it's it's rippled in a way that you can't pull it one direction and take it out. You got to go a couple different directions, which requires cutting it and reseaming it at a doorway and things of that nature. How but do they get like that? Is there any? Do you know? It's just the fibers loosen up over time. The matting underneath the the, the, the uh, fibers loosens up and just kind of opens up and just creates more material than than the room. Gotcha. Sizes, yeah. So have you ever got there and you have like the oldest carpet ever from the 70s and now you have to clean this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Definitely get there and you say, boy, that, that pattern looks like something out of the 70s. Sure, you're definitely. And they still want to clean that and keep they it. They want to clean. Uh, you know, you'll get there and it'll be, you know, the carpet will be so thin it's like steam cleaning a beach towel. But, uh, you know, you do what you got to do. And, I, and I'll tell people, I'll say, listen, this carpet's really on our last leg. I mean, I, I'll clean it for you, but you may want to look at, uh, at replacing it. I have guys I refer, the, you know, the, the replacement jobs to. Seen a better day. It's seen better days, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sure you probably see some amazing stuff, and I'm sure we'll have time to share some of those stories towards the end of the show. Um, we were talking a little bit about natural stone as well. Um, do you have as many issues with stains reappearing on stone or tile or that kind of thing no, after you clean no, it and tile, seal it? Tile, yeah, tile and stone, you're not going to see things reappear because they're, they're not going to wick back like the fiber, carpet fiber does. But generally, if we clean it, it's clean. Gotcha. And so, um, what are the prices again? Can we? I know we talked about that, but can we talk about carpet prices and then tile, and then it's different for stone, right? A little bit. Uh, well, the cleaning is pretty much for carpet. It's twenty-five cents a square foot. For tile, it's and stone. It's thirty-five cents a square foot. Now that that depends on a couple of things too. If there's uh, already a sealer down that uh, we need to strip off, we might add a little bit for for stripping that off first. Um, but generally. 99% of the time, it's, you're looking at 35 cents for hard surfaces and 25 cents for carpet. Now, what does your average job cost? Like, if you go in and you're you're generally cleaning what's there, and I imagine sometimes that's a combination of carpet and tile. If I had to put an average, I'd be, say right around 250 dollars, you know, for a, like a whole house situation. Gotcha. Uh, you know, if, I, if I'm doing a room or two, it's but if I'm doing a whole house, uh, I'd put the average right around 250. And so, tell me about the truck, because we had a running joke. <laughs> with the truck and the machine before you started you're like can oh. I say this you said you said the uh, equipment's big or it's huge right oh with the but yeah it's built into the truck right, right. the machine you talk about that I got the huge equipment <laughs> Tampa <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was trying to get you to say and you were gotcha. playing nice gotcha. so um I wasn't sure if I could say that I might get sued but. does the um I don't think so. does the does the equipment matter like for you oh, yeah. compared to someone else, yeah. I mean, and how does how does the average person tell uh, if you have the right equipment or not to do the job? I mean, for the for the lay person, it's hard to. I mean, here's the thing: the equipment I have is you can't get a bigger machine in a van, and it, it maintains the water the temperature at 220 degrees. If I'm hitting it with 2,000 psi on the stone, it's it's keeping it at 220 degrees, which is important. Um, you know, carpet's a little easier, but uh, it's also the, the vacuum pressure. Um, you know, I'd say if you're if you if really look at the, the the truck that pulls up there, or, or try to get try to get on someone's Facebook page and see what you're dealing with, because uh, you know I see trucks pull up all the time that are just you know cluttered and everything else. I mean, uh, if you look at my truck, it's 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 clean. I keep it clean. I keep it looking good because I'm going into your house to clean it. And if I sh show up and I've got rags hanging out the doors and I got you know my hoses are all over the place, the, the outside is dirty. What does that say about my business? You know, so that's that's what I say. Just the carpet and the floors might be dirtier than what right, you got there. Right, exactly. That's what I would say. So with that water being two hundred and twenty degrees, do you guys ever get burned? Because that's pretty hot. I actually did one time. This is when I first got my equipment. I was I was testing it out, and I had a, a friend make a little hose for me to fill some of my solution uh, bottles, and I thought, well, this is really cool. I'm going to try it out. So I, so I'm I'm doing my own house. And I plugged the solution hose, and I forgot I had the pressure already on. And when I plugged it in, there was no valve on this hose; it was just a hose clicking into the the, uh, the the valve. And it started whipping around like a like a like a fire hose, and uh, sprayed me across the ankle. And it was 220 degrees of water. It sprayed me across the ankle, and I, I had some blisters, and I still had a little scar there. But uh, so I I took that hose and I threw it away promptly. And <laughs> don't use it anymore. But uh, so that was a lesson learned. But. Uh, uh, and you're going, thank goodness it was me and not like somebody's right. pet.
pit or something. Well, we're careful. I mean, we, we, we make sure that uh, you know we keep the to keep the kids away from the hose stuff. I mean, it's not once everything's clicked in, it's you know you're fine. It's not gonna you know not a dangerous situation. Right, but like I tell people, with any business owner, you're gonna have accidents. You're gonna have things. You're gonna have learning mistakes. I don't care sure, what business absolutely. you are. You're gonna have things that were like trial and error. Whoops, we learned from that. Absolutely. We're never gonna do that again. And it, and it just makes you better as you learn. I mean, it's and, and, you know you're going to make mistakes in any business the key is you know make good in those mistakes if you do if you, if you do something on someone's floor make it right um own up to it fix it own up to it exactly i mean people don't expect to be perfect i mean they want perfection but they don't expect you to always to be perfect as long as you take care of the situation uh and, you know fortunately i haven't had uh you know anything like that but uh you know, hey, if you, if you make a mistake, own up to it. Gotcha. Well, you're listening to Tampa Home Talk. It's about that time. We have to take our last break of the show. We're in the studio today with Dennis Napoli of Gecko Floor Care. I'm your host, Katrina Madewell. When we come back in a few minutes, we're going to talk about what trade organizations you're a member of, um, any challenges you've had, awards, recognitions, and we're also going to give you some stories when we come back. Just a moment. Stick around. We'll be back. I just sent you a message. You mentioned somebody you know that does replacement carpets. Yes. Can you send me their info too when you get a chance? Sure. Do you want to show up with them? <laughs> we'll do. It's what we do. <laughs> Thanks. It's all about never. Mm hmm. Got some stuff in your head, stories and stuff? There was that one story you said that it started off as a little carpet cleaning and it wound up being a whole uh, oh, yeah, office yeah. building or yeah. something. Yeah, I could talk about that one. Yeah. Any kooky stories? Anywhere? Kooky stories. Anything funny, fun, gross? Um, man. Come on, Mark Dish. I mean, you gotta the, have the, some the stories. One, one we got called, I don't have any stories. We got called out for this, him. It was a it was a trailer out in the woods, pretty, pretty much, and it was and it was I, it was a crime scene. I mean, it, yeah, but I don't want to talk about that one. <laughs> Oh, I really don't. It was, it was, bad. Bad. I'll tell you about that one off was it like it a biohazard? Bad. You had to go clean it out. It was DNA on the walls, yeah. and it was like I'm like this is like a mm -hmm. this is like there's human trafficking going on here. You know? Oh my like, god! Oh, wow! <laughs> Nasty. Wow! Yeah, like that. You don't have any. That would be a big hit. Any yeah, I don't want to be. Huh? I I I mean I could tell you about people showing up in their underwear, half naked, tennis. I mean all kinds of crazy stories. You know about anything? Yeah. Not like yeah. that yet. No, no naked. He said it would yet. be a big hit. Yeah. <laughs> if you yeah. talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a big hit. I'm like, getting a lot of calls. I can, hey, I got a big mess over here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could. I, I'll, I'll mention it. I won't go into details, but. Okay. All right. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Three, two, one. Welcome back. You get it. Sorry, 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 sorry. You weren't quite ready for me. It's <laughs> like. All right. Take it back. <laughs> You're ready now? Already. Three, two, one. Welcome back. You're listening to Tampa Home Talk. I'm your host, Katrina Madewell. In studio today, we have Gecko Floor, floor Care. And <laughs> bah, we're in studio today That's with a tough one, I know. Dennis Napoli. <laughs> and uh, we have talked so much today about cleaning and caring for. And you have to check out the video. Like, radio is different, but if you can hop on over to Tampa Home Talk, on our Facebook page, we will share the video so you can at least see the the grout cleaning on the on the tile because that's pretty amazing. Like carpet one too. Literally, I'm gonna call yeah. that like the the tile magic eraser. That's what it looks like. like. The blue eraser. <laughs> Definitely. So if you missed the show, you can catch it in its entirety. Just look for Tampa Home Talk. If you're looking to connect with Dennis or have your floors cleaned, we have a special offer for you. Correct? Yes. So if you mentioned Tampa Home Talk, we're going to give you a special discount just for our people listening. Yeah, we'll do a 10% discount for anybody who's a, a listener of this show. Okay. Awesome. Um, so tell me about, are you a member of any trade organizations? Do you have any networking groups that you work with as far yeah, as... Yeah, networking um, groups. I'm part of the Riverview Chamber of Commerce. Uh, also, uh, Roaring Revenue is a BNI group of Business Network International. Um, when I came down here... Uh, Really, the first week I was down here, we were switching our bank account around, and uh, the girl at the bank uh, said, "Hey, you know, you should you'd be a good fit for our BNI group," and uh, um, it, it really was. I mean, that's where I got my learned how to network. I was never really a much of a networker before coming down here. Being a part of that BNI group and Roaring Revenue uh, was a tremendous opportunity to learn how to network and, and, and meet people and make the right types of contacts. So, what did it make you do that you didn't do before? Uh, just get out there and meet people and, and, and approach in the right way, target the people I want to 
talk to, uh, you know, the property managers, you know, learn about who I'm supposed to be really getting in there and talking to and to, to, to grow the business. Now, what about, do you have any trade organizations you're a member of, like people that do the similar type stuff so you guys can mastermind and learn and network from each other? Yeah, there's a, there's a couple groups. Uh, there's one, it's the Truck Mount Forum that I get onto, and, and guys are all the time sharing tips about, you know, if you have a question like, man, I got this situation, I don't know, you know, how to get this stain out, guys will chime in and, and, uh, and help out with that. And um, do you ever have any issues where, or I mean, I was thinking with as far as collaboration with regards to your peers. Um, really? I don't know what that was. Okay. That was going. Sorry. Can you just edit this part out since we're pre recording anyway? Yeah, I, I don't know if that was headphones or not. It's all right now. <clears throat> okay. Uh, you could just start back up whenever you want. So when you think about collaborating with your peers, I um, specifically think of like, for example, a lot of my realtor peers and the real estate people that I work with, we collaborate and work together a lot. We help each other out. You know, some people see them as competition. I mm -hmm. see them as my friends. And so I think there's a lot of value in really being able to network with your peers because they're right. going to see things that you haven't experienced and vice versa. Right. Is there a trade organization for people like you with regard to floor care and floor cleaning? Um, yeah, what I've seen it really is more the more the online uh, uh, forums uh, to get into. There's one that's called it's literally called Truck Mount Forum, and and, uh, um, and we talk about things all the time. You get in there, and if you got a, if you got a problem, you, you voice it, and guys will chime in and help each other out, uh, and vice versa. If you know, if you've got a solution to someone's problem, you can you can help them out with that as well. Nice. Um, so, how many employees and workers do you have? How many trucks do you have on the road? Right now, it's just the one truck. One it's, truck. It's, it's me and my two sons, and we're actually getting to the point now. We're looking at getting another truck or two, so it's getting to that point. Uh, but we're, we, you know, ultimately our goal, and again, we, we've been here in uh, in Tampa for about a year now. Our goal is to have, you know, a family business where we have, you know, maybe ten trucks out there, uh, and you know, several employees, and, and then keep growing it. Maybe franchise out in, the, in three or three to five years. All right. So let's talk about some stories of some people that you've had. Uh, I've had some really good, really good ones. Uh, one where where uh, a woman called me out. She said, "Hey, I got a kitchen. I'm not sure the square footage, you know." And I'm looking at the area that she was in. I'm thinking, "Okay, it's probably going to be a smaller kitchen, maybe a, a $35 or $50 job." I'm thinking, "Boy, do I, you know, this this was about a 45-minute drive. Do I really want to go out there?" Uh, I, there was also another job I was doing the next day that was uh, for for somebody that I do properties for. So I'm thinking, "Well, okay, I'll I'll, I'll do it tomorrow if that's fine." Make it make a make a nice trip area. out of it, right? Same area. So I get out there and I and I pull up the address and it's a it's a it's a nursing home, uh, an assisted living, and, and and they wanted me to do the entire cafeteria, which was a huge job. They wanted me just to quote it, so I said, well, let me rather than just give you the quote, let me do demo this little area here for you. And so I pulled out the tile tool, I, I hit a ten by ten area of their floor, and they looked at it and they looked at each other and said, well, okay, can you just come out and do the job for us? Don't worry. Just tell us what it is, and we'll, you know, come out and do it. So they're so like, did, never, yeah, mind the quote, yeah, never mind the quote. Just go ahead just, and just take just your business. Just tell us what it is to come do it. You know, because they, they were looking, they had inspectors coming, and they wanted the, the right job. So uh, we so we did that for them. The regional director was there, and uh, and she said, hey, you know, I've got these other twelve facilities. Do you mind doing them as well? So so what what, what I thought was going to be a small little job just to help somebody out ended up being a, a huge job that helped us really get started down here. Um, and you know, get some money going uh, early on. Uh, then I do have a couple of nightmare jobs. <laughs> uh oh, all right, let's touch on this real uh, quick. We only have yeah, a few minutes I mean, left anyway. There was one, I don't want to go into too many details because I don't want to gross the listeners out, but, <laughs> but uh, it had to be some kind of crime scheme. We, we, we go out there, it's kind of this place in the middle of the woods, and we had to bring our own water and the whole thing. And uh, it was just, uh, like I said, there was cockroaches everywhere. Uh, um, it's just, yeah, it was it was bad. But it, the funny thing is, I mean, it, it, we did a really good job. We got some really good reviews online because of it. Uh, so you know, it ended up being a positive. But uh, I had to I had to almost push my sons through the door to get them to do it. <laughs> well, the other thing too that's interesting because we run into this a lot in the real estate arena where someone's moved out and they've shut off the utilities. As much as we try mm -hmm. not to get them to do that, you can actually show up. You don't need their electricity yeah, or their water. I've, you can still to, do the job. I've gone to places where there's no electricity, no water, and and taking care of it. Now here's a situation: you got to be careful. If it's if it's hot out and it's humid, and I go into a house and there's no electricity, to turn the fans on, and no water. Uh, the water can just sit in those carpets and get moldy. So I got I got to be careful with that. Yeah. 
Um, I'll tell you what, that damp red stuff works well. I had my yeah. interior of my car cleaned and I put that in there and that stuff works so great. And my son has a Jeep and I gave him one of those and he's like, oh my gosh, mom, there's already like two inches of water in this bag. That stuff is so amazing. <laughs> I'll tell you, ordered it online. It was just the best. So, all right, you're listening to Tampa Home Talk, our off-air number where you can call or text us is 813-377-2775. Again, you can call or text us, and we will connect you with Dennis, 813-377-2775. You can also hop on over to Tampa Home Talk. We're on Facebook. We'll show the videos. We'll put Dennis's announcement card with your phone number, website, and all that stuff over there. Or, again, you can call us at 813-377-2775. Or just text us the word floor, and we will respond back and give you Dennis's information. Nice. Thanks so much for listening to us here on Tampa Home Talk. We love having you part of the show every single week. Week, if you have some feedback for us or some of your great guests, just let us know at 813-377-2775. Remember, love where you live or I'll fix it. Welcome home. You don't do the doorbell here. Is that just easy? Yeah. Okay. That's really just good. on it. Oh. No, it's fine. I can if I remember, but okay, I'll have to remember. I don't think Lee will remember. Ding so. well, well, Actually, I'll get a doorbell yeah. sound. <laughs> you can just do that right on a whim, huh? That's pretty good. That's what? really really good. Do what on a whim? Just what you do. Little ends before. Where did you put? Sometimes, I mean, the people that like to talk make it easier because I don't have to talk the whole time. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They just talk a lot, so it's I love that because then otherwise I gotta fill all the space. Yeah. It's like, can we just play some music? <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead and give out your information because we're still rolling live here on our Facebook stream. So go ahead and give out your info. and We are going to post your cards still, okay, but how uh, can people reach you? Yeah, we are Gecko Floor Care. You can go online and just Google Gecko Floor Care. Uh, we're on Facebook. G-E-C-K-O. G-E-C-K-O uh, Floor Care. Uh, just remember the phone number, 844-GO-GECKO. That'll, that'll ring right to me. 844-GO-GECKO. Uh, 844-GO-GECKO. If you want to email me, it's denny at gecko4care.com. D-E-N-N-Y? D-E-N-N-Y at G-E-C-K-O floorcare.com. Awesome. Don't forget to mention Tampa Hotel. And don't forget to mention Tampa Hotel. That's Hotel. right. For your special discount. Thank you so much for joining us today for the show. We appreciate having you on. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, Katrina.